G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play Hero, and we're back again for some more modern action. So I'm going to be taking an unchanged list into this next modern league. Um, the main two changes between this league and the one before that was the inclusion of Solitude. Um, this is going to be coming in against Living End, against Death Shadow, um, uh, the Fat Domain decks, and uh, decks like that, right? Um, outside of that, we'll just uh, draw the attention to the sideboard. We also have a Chalice of the Void for Cascade decks like Living End and Rhinos. Force of Vigor, obviously, for Hammer Time, other enchantment decks, Amulet. Uh, Pithing Needle as a catch-all to help answer uh, Engineer Explosives. Would name Besaidu, indexed with Ren and Six, so we don't get uh, completely locked out by Ren and Six plus Besaidu. Catoctique for Tron, Leyline of Sanctity for Burn, Discard, and Sacrifice decks. In the main deck, we've got a, a good mixture of cards. We are running uh, two Spider Umbra along with our Hyena Umbras. These are going to give us six Totem Armor effects for decks with Dress Down plus Unholy Heat, which is pretty strong defense against them. Doesn't really help us into bounce effects um, such as. Uh, Echoing Truth and Brazen Borrower. Uh, we've got lots of uh, Vigilance for the Raghavan matchup with Sentinel's Eyes and uh, Daybreak Coronet. So Sentinel's Eyes plus any First Strike Aura is going to allow you to attack into that Raghavan and still be able to block it. Uh, posts like a potential blowout, we've got Floofy Paws, we're going to be getting back our Sentinel's Eyes from our graveyard, our Rancor is going to be returning to hand, um, this is going to give us some draw triggers and we can research up our First Strike, our Totem Armor, our Evasion, etc. Outside of that, we've also got a couple of copies of Audacity for uh, a bit of extra trample, and also when it goes to the graveyard, we can cut, draw a card off of it. Uh, we've got Cartouche Solidarity to generate a token if that's needed. Uh, we've got Evasion here, we've got even better Evasion here, um, and we've got an extra copy of Ethereal Armor at two mana as well. With all that out of the way, let's get into the league. Alright, here we are for match number one versus Macho. We won the die roll on the play. Uh, this is potential to keep this hand. We've got Fluffy with Dried Arbor backup. Um, I think given the fact we haven't got a Hexproof creature though, it's a pretty safe mulligan to six. I'd say this hand looks a lot better. We'll keep, go ahead and keep this. The weakest card in hand at the moment is Fluffy Paw, so we'll throw that one back in the match. Um, so yeah, this is just going to be a real quick rundown. Um, if the league goes poorly, uh, I'm going to have to post this one anyway. I'm going to do my best to play well, obviously. If there's opportunity for me to concede to time, I'll probably go ahead and look to do that. Um, just given given my time constraints today. So it looks like we're versing a Tron here. This is a pretty poor hand into Tron, really. Um, only attacking for three here on this turn. Um, and our attack next turn isn't much better. I'm running a little bit behind schedule because I spent like six hours today um, hanging up framework and plastering and things like that. Uh, to put up a new cabinet over the place of what was previously a flat mirror. So, we'll press for time, opponent as is mine, chromatic start, looks like an ancient stirrings, sylvan scrying maybe. Alright, so sylvan scrying from our opponent, getting the as is tower. Find a very redundant mana source and, uh, well, this is, oh my goodness, it's making me click every time, that's horrible. Not the aggressive start we wanted to have. We probably would have been better off keeping the light paws and tutoring up a couple of more impact auras like Rancor Ethereal Armor. As it is, we'll play out this Slippery Bogle and look to attack for as much as possible next turn. If it's Khan, they're going to remove all the glitters. If it's Khan the Great Creator, they're going to ensnaring bridge. Um, see what happens. All right, so it looks like our opponent has Worm Coil Engine. It could mean they have something a little bit bigger than uh, Khan the Great Creator, Khan Liberated, etc. Such as Ugin, such as Ulamog. I think we start off by sucking Horizon Canopy. That's not a whole lot of help. All right, so we can attack for six here. We do have Vigilance on our guy. 
opponent is willing to block. We currently don't have any form of trample or anything, so just trading off, giving our opponent some tokens there. I think we're dead into Ugin regardless. I think we can get a little bit more value off this light pause by delaying it for a turn. So I'm not going to play it here. It's only bad if we hit like Daybreak Coronet or Spirit Mantle and Spirit Mantle is a pretty strong card to be playing regardless. All right, so opponent plays out Oblivion Stone, which is going to be a pretty good answer for us. It is, however, a slower answer. Um, I'd really like to see like a Rancor here to pressure our opponents. Opponent willing to attack in. This is an interesting spot because if we block here, they're going to Oblivion Stone in response. Um, they will, however, lose their own creatures, right? It's not colorless, like, or colored permanents. Destroy each non-land permanent without a fake counter on it. All right, so we are pretty safe here to go block, go block. See what our opponent does. Okay, and they're actually willing to let the damage resolve there. Maybe we should have gone after the lifelink token with our first strike guy, just to delay our opponent a little bit there. Clay cover scout. It's going to be an attack from us. Our totem armor on hyena umbra will be good into the oblivion stone. We'll just see how preemptively they want to pop this one. Again, I did misplay and give my opponent three more life than they should have have here. Um, so maybe they can be a little more patient with their Oblivion Stone. All right, it looks like they're just happy to cash that one in now. Interestingly enough. So only hitting them for one point of damage now. Right, I will go ahead and post main the Light Paws here, Floofy Paws. <clears throat> And then we'll uh, escape this Sentinel's Eyes from the graveyard. I'm going to put it on Scout here. Uh, actually, let's, let's go ahead and put this on Light Paws. We've got enough cards in the graveyard to escape a second time. And then here, we're probably just searching up Rancor because it's the best card to reset onto Glade Cover Scout. And passing the turn. All right, so opponent plays Power Plant, uh, has access to 10 mana here. It goes for Sylvan Scrying. Could be a Blast Zone. Yep, they do search out the Blast Zone. They've already played their mana for turn though. Um, so it could be a bit of a miss sequence from our opponent. Another Oblivion Stone. With a mana to activate. Man, I'm so upset that we get blown out there. That's really upsetting. All right, let's see if our opponent misplays into the Sentinel's Eyes here. If the trigger goes off, we can get Totem Armor. We can fog this whole Oblivion Stone effect. And they catch it in in response. So we're in like real dire straits now. Um, it's, I don't know. It's, it, if you're playing around Oblivion Stone, it's wrong to get Rancor. If we're playing around Khan or something which we haven't seen yet. I think it's right to go for the Rancor. So I think we lost the lost out in a coin flip in that spot. Khan the Great Creator from our opponent now finally. Um wonder how long they've been like holding this patiently. And opponent searches out Trini Sphere, so that one's like well and truly locked now, right? What do we see? Alright, that's gonna be a concede. Okay, so here we can see a Tron deck. It has been making a little bit of a resurgence in the metagame as of recent. Uh, cards to keep in mind, uh, potential dismembers, warping whales. Obviously, our opponent had the Oblivion Stones. Relics are also in that flex slot. Um, they will be bringing in beside you against us from the sideboard. Usually, they just take out their forest as an efficiency swap there. Obviously, we've got main deck cards to worry about, like Khan the Great Creator, Khan Liberated, Ugin, which is almost unbeatable, um, Chalice of the Void, Engineered Explosives, all of which are tutorable with Khan the Great Creator, uh, Walking Ballista, Pip, um, and the Ensnaring Bridge Lock there that we uh, have come to know and love so well. 
A reminder guys, if you do enjoy the video or find it entertaining, informative, please consider subscribing. Um, so cards that are of use here into the Tron matchup, uh, Gadok Teague is an all-star here. Force figure can be pretty good because we can interact with their ensnaring bridge. And additionally, we can uh, knock them off their mana by taking out like an expedition map before they crack it. Pithing Needle can name Blast Zone, can name their Planeswalkers, um, even, yeah, even, uh, <laughs> All that good stuff. All right, so what I'm probably going to do is just take out like three Daybreak Coronet, a Cartouche, and all the Glitters. Uh, I don't really want to take out any of my evasive effects. I want to keep as many one aura, um, as many one mana auras in as possible for the chance of a turn three kill with Light Paws. Uh, this hand doesn't have any, any interaction. It has an okay clock with four damage on turn two, but after that, it sort of dries up pretty quick. So I think we can do better on a six. All right, this is a bit better. We've got interaction. Got a little bit of a better clock. Let's go ahead and keep this. Um, so Daybreak Coronet as well isn't going to be that important for winning the matchup it can be a little bit of a liability with if they can't the great creator go after our sorry can't liberator go after our other enchantments daybreak coronet can fall off for free into the graveyard so uh the the lifelink isn't going to be relevant in most matches really but we'll win swept teeth and pass all right so opponent kicks things off by keeping a six card hand Going for Tower into Chromatic Sphere here. We have a choice between Dried Arbor and Temple Garden. Dried Arbor can be good into things like Oblivion Stone because it is a land permanent that we can reset on. Um, it can be a little bit weak or we might want to hold off onto it into an Ugin. I think we're just going to ignore that mostly and just go for jamming Floofy Paws here. Assuming our opponents are not kept in Dismember, not boarded in... Uh, like a walking ballista to shoot this thing off for one mana. I'm assuming they're developing their mana here mostly. I think we want to hold on to force for one more turn as well. All right, opponent cracks that once for ancient stirrings and searches up beside you with the ancient stirring, uh, finds beside you with the ancient stirrings, urges his power plant into expedition map from our opponent. Um, so this hand is fairly reasonable for playing around our opponent, um, or at least enchantment interaction, because we do get so many free enchantments from it. Definitely Ethereal Armor. I guess maybe I missequence this. Maybe I'm supposed to lead on Rancor so I can double up on... I lead, lead on Hyena Umbra so I can double up on Rancor effects. Something maybe I should have considered a bit more. We had Sentinel's Eyes. We'll get the Batman Robin effect going there with the auras returning from the graveyard. Go ahead and attack. Also, searching up the Rancor would give us a pitchable guard to force a vigor, assuming this one gets removed. So we could have gone instead of Ethereal Armor for maybe Sentinel's Eyes and Rancor. Um, not in that order. If it's like Khan into remove Floofy Paws, we're in a bit of trouble. We'll see what they have. Oh, also, another thing, I did have my aircon on last time. It's summer here in Australia at the moment. Um, last time I was recording, I had some complaints about the audio quality. Hopefully this is a little bit better for you today. I am sweating it out here while doing all of this. Um, so I'm probably going to get progressively redder and sweatier as the video goes. I'll uh, definitely take a shower after this one. All right, so it looks like we're a little bit fortunate here. Opponent plays out the Chromatic Star. And then they're going to look to complete their Tron mana. If we hit an aura here, we can kill our opponent, or we can just kill them by attacking outside of the aura. Um, I'm assuming this is just free. They can Chromatic Star float mana into Besayu. So I think we want to look for as much damage as possible here to not lose to Besayu. Sorry, Besayu. All right, Daybreak does resolve. And Audacity here is probably just fine as a little replacement effect to start drawing some stuff. So looking to attack now. We'll attack wide with the Dried Arbor as well. So the Audacity isn't going to be coming back to our hand, but it is going to be drawing a card for us. Opponent can remove Ethereal Armor here, removing like, what, six damage? 
and we still have well and truly lethal. Uh, still 11 there, plus one from the Dryad Arbor is lethal. Cool. All right, so going into sideboarding for game three here when we are on the draw, there's consideration to remove a Floofy Pause because it's a less relevant win condition. Um, on turn three, now that we're on the draw, it's less likely for that to happen. Um, so we can free up a slot there. We can potentially bring in an extra Force of Vigor, potentially bring back in some of our other auras, um, something like that. I think I'm going to go a little heavier on the interaction, bring in our Force of Vigor, and really look to blow up our opponent's expedition map and ruin their mana. Uh, no creature hand, we have to mulligan. Opponent's gone down to five. We will keep this. It's got a hate piece. Uh, toss up between probably Griss Spoon and Floofy Paws as to what to bottom here. Let's bottom the Floofy Paws, I think. Keep the Griff Spoon if our opponent has Khan Liberated and we lock them out with Gadok Tig. The next play is going to be Worm Coil Engine and we're going to want to have Flying to go over the top of Worm Coil Engine. Uh, we still don't out damage it though, which could be a problem. So we'll be drawing to lots of auras. Currently, we only have one Daybreak Coronet in the deck. So we're going to be looking for Sentinel's Eyes, other Ethereal Armors as like a race effect, things like that. So it looks like our opponent mulled all the way to four, and that's a pretty rough one. But if there's any deck that can get past a mulligan, it is Tron. Mulligan, uh, Tron does mulligan well. Play both Poster Boy and pass. All right, Kura, Maddox Star has been sacrificed here. And Ancient Stirrings from our opponent. Finding Tower. All right, opponent plays that one out. Three in hand. Mana, cool, perfect. Now we don't, uh, we sort of do have to jam this this turn. All right, let's jam this and hope it lives. If our opponent's holding up Dismember here, it's really good. And it's also would be a really greedy keep for them after mulling to four cards. If they top decked it, that would be one hell of a top deck. Uh, we can also note if we were to have kept our uh, Light Paws in hand and we were to draw the third mana, we would be able to turn three kill our opponent with Floofy Paws. So the play is play like Griff Spoon, get an Ethereal Armor, play Ethereal Armor, get Rancor, play Hyena Umbra, get any other aura and it attacks for exactly 20. I think it might be 21 with Audacity. It might be 20 with Audacity. I'm not entirely sure. When it has Tron mana, it looks like they don't have too much backup from that though currently. Um, they could be holding removal for Gadok Teague, in which case we're probably better off going in on the Bogle. Let's get our Totem Armor. Same damage with Rancor and Ethereal Armor. So we'll go for Rancor. We do have a green card to pitch to Force in hand currently. So Rancor is fine to play out. Could be that um, Gadok Tigers just got our opponent really well as well. Just lock them off on big Planeswalkers that they can't cast. All right, so opponent passes to us without playing a land. Um, so four actual spells in hand. We'll look to cast down and attack for a heck of a lot. Not quite lethal yet, but pretty darn close. And we can also tutor Dried Arbor if they wipe the board with like an Ugin. And, uh, well, we can't quite Dried Arbor Rancor because Rancor gets exiled as well. All right, so there it is. Opponent is down to two life and most certainly top decking. All right, so opponent plays Chromatic Star now, and I guess they're gonna cycle that looking for some description of answer. They do cycle for green. They're not going for like black mana here to conserve life total. They'd need to somehow assemble double black to dismember here at this point though, because their life total is down to two currently. Ancient Stirrings from our opponent now. And the concession from our opponent. Well, what, what can I say? This one of Gadok Teague in the sideboard, absolute MVP. Um, no other card would have won the game for us there because presumably they're holding at least one big Planeswalker in hand, if not more. Four cards in hand concedes the match. Absolutely incredible. Uh, maybe we should be increasing the number of Gadok Teague in our sideboard to two, possibly even three copies. Three is probably a bit of a stretch though. Um, I'll go over that at the end of the video. On to game two. 
All right, so here we are for match number two. We lost the Daryl against Mr. Cool and is definitely keepable, although only one white source in hand here. Um, we could be versing a Tron, Underworld Breach. Is it Prowess? Uh, looks like a Prowess deck. Daybreak in hand. So this is potentially going to be about stalling until we can resolve Daybreak Coroner and overwhelm them with life gain. All right, so we brick on white source. We're going to lead on wooded foothills here and do the old fetch shock. Uh, we're setting ourselves up for a double white aura turn two, um, assuming we draw the other white mana source. Otherwise, we'd be playing forest this turn and fetch shocking with the temple garden anyway, so we might as well go for the highest upside. Uh, playing with swift spear, a couple of attacks, and hopefully they use a burn spell and they're not holding up spell pierce at this point. They're probably in a pretty decent spot with, um, okay, cool. They're tapping out. That's really good. Lightning Bolt, we'll take that. The double uh, prowess creature, they're in a really strong spot here. That's pretty terrible. Um, maybe we should have Cartouche attacked. Um, I think we're just at a loss. We can't reasonably block our opponent's creature. If we do, we... Are, it's impossible to daybreak card in next turn, so I shouldn't have played Hyena Umbra. I should have played either Ethereal Armor or Katusha Solidarity and then attacked. Um, given blocking isn't an option, I just didn't consider that correctly. Uh, I'm trying to play these games like pretty quick here. Sorry about the misplays. Uh, opponent finds Lava Dart, land from hand, fetch shock, and Lava Dart's going to be pretty reasonable here, maybe even kill us, because uh, that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 damage in total. Uh, so I think we go to exactly 0 at this point with Flashback Lava Dart. Uh, sorry, Neg 1, pardon me. Alright, well GG to our opponent, but we have a really good sideboard plan. All right, so here we are up against, uh, is it Prowess? It looks like this particular one we're looking at doesn't have any Spell Pierce, Main, or Sideboard. This one also doesn't have Spell Pierce, Main, or Sideboard. We'll just check one more real quick. All right, no Spell Pierce, Main, or Sideboard. Sideboard interaction of Wear Tear, maybe Prismatic Ending, cards of that effect. Main deck, they're just trying to burn us out as much as possible. All right, so I said we had a really good sideboard plan, and here it is. Uh, we're going to have Leyline of Sanctity to stop all their burn effects. We're going to have Solitude to remove their creatures. That's about all we should really need here. Uh, do we worry about Blast Zone at all? It doesn't look like Blast Zone is included in their deck list. They want a lot of red mana sources, so that works out quite nicely for us. Um, look, probably, honestly, it's just Fluffy Paws out. Um, all the Glitters can probably say Spirit Mantle is probably a little bit weaker because all the Glitters gets the free buff from Leyline of Sanctity. Uh, after that, the weakest card is probably Audacity. Let's just go ahead and submit that one. All right, so we haven't got any life gain here. It's pretty slow clock with our creature. I think we can definitely mulligan this, look for something better. Uh, this one also does not have life gain, um, but it has a much better clock, so we'll go ahead and keep this one. I guess like downsides to this hand is we don't have a creature to block with. We also don't have trample. So we're going to get stonewalled a little bit with like third path iconist, uh, iconist, iconoclast tokens. Um, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Just th this is not a, a hand that a Bogle player reasonably mulligans. Um, it's like literally missing life gain to win the match up against our opponent or like one ley line effect. Uh, we're drawing to Trample, so we have five Trample effects, we have eight Vigilance effects we're drawing to. Ooh, okay, well this deals less damage to us than Temple Garden does. Let's just be on the offensive and try to raise our opponent. This could also send the message that we have life gain in hand if we're not looking to chump block our opponent. All right, so our opponent actually decides to block. Is this like mutagenic growth? I'm really glad we've got the totem armor here in this spot. Um, this is probably okay for us. 
Like we lose Hyena Umbra, we've got another Totem Armor effect in hand. Um, and opponents missed four damage in our face. So I think overall that's a win, but we do have to draw some more effects off the top of our library. All right, opponent, uh, we, we're going to need that Trample or that Evasion of some description. Three cards in hand for our opponent now, and that is not the card draw. Uh, we'll throw this one down, we'll attack again, see how our opponent responds. All right, uh, no blocks from our opponent. I'm going to play out the Dried Arbor here. If they waste a burn effect on Dried Arbor, that is a win for me. If we get any sort of block in, that is also a win. The worst case scenario would be Lava Dart and, uh, and removing the Dried Arbor. Well, our opponent has found Flame Jab, which does have Retrace, so... Goodbye, Dried Arbor. I mean, whatever. It happens. We'll take it on the chin. Big attack for opponent. Um, at this point, is it better to switch on the defensive? Maybe I shouldn't have even attacked that turn. Please, something decent. All right, well, there's no going back, right? Three cards in hand. This has Retrace. You may cast this card from your graveyard in addition to discarding a land and paying its other costs. Um, God, do we just want to block this big chunky guy and look for life gain? Uh, wins next turn would be Theral Armor, Daybreak Coronet, All That Glitters. Assuming our opponent can't block any damage whatsoever. Um, all the glitters, no, that would have to block two damage to stop all the glitters. And yeah, I think we just block. I three, four, five, six, seven. Any other one burn spell. They've made all their land drops. All right, let, let's just send in. I, 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 I think we're sending this into suicide, but drawing to like nine cards in 50 isn't great odds. We're probably better off thinking like just wagering that they don't have it and taking the loss on the chin if that's what happens. Ah, uh, Lava Darts probably game. Lava Darts equal to four damage here. Another Lava Dart. All right, well, that's eight damage now. I wonder if we could have even have reasonably blocked this Soul Scour Mage or if that would have just triggered Totem Armor. Flame Jab on Retrace, discarding Steam Vents. One card in hand. Wow. So the play was hold up blockers and hope to draw. Oh well, GG to our opponent. This is going to happen, right? Alright, and one Lava Dart's being flashed back. Our opponent is holding the other one up. Puts us to exactly zero. What would we have drawn? Sentinel's Eyes would have put us to nine power, seven toughness. We could have blocked this. We would have still been taking a horde of damage next turn. So we could have stopped five damage. And we still don't have lethal next turn, so we were dead regardless. All right, well, GG, on to the next one. Okay, welcome back for match number three. Lost the die roll again. This is a pretty good looking seven. We'll go ahead and keep. Uh, versing Senestar this game. And looks like maybe we're versing Oops all spells. So that's pretty bad for us. Um, I'm going to thin the library as much as possible to try and draw an extra one mana aura to try and turn three, uh, kill our opponent with floofy paws here. All right, this one in tapped and another turn of not doing too much for our opponent. We can reasonably play the forest here, so let's go ahead and do that. In for one point of damage, let's go. All right, and Manamorphos from our opponent. So the Manamor the, the deck list I'm looking at for Oops or Spells is not running Manamorphos. Um, it's possible that we're just versing Char Belcher here. All right, so we get to see our opponent's entire library. We get burnt for a whole heap. Well, our opponent literally turned three, killed us. There's not much we can do about that. Main deck explosives at one. 
three packed of negations, possibly a fourth in hand. All right, well, that's fine. If our opponent had recrossed the paths, we draw a one mana aura, we untap and kill them. We wouldn't have hit the one mana aura as it was if we Rancor, searching Ethereal Armor, Ethereal Armor, searching Audacity. That's 4 8 from the Rancors, search from the Ethereal Armors, plus another 4 is 12. 13 damage we had our opponent for. Uh, not quite enough. The other option is Rancor, search Ethereal Armor, Daybreak, Coronet, search all the glitters, which might have been slightly more damage, so like 8, 9, 10. 13, 14 damage, gain some life, not quite enough. All right, so here we can see a Belcher deck, cards to be aware of. Uh, Fury, we've got Magus of the Moon, which can be frustrating, and Force of Vigor, really. Uh, Gaddock Tig is reasonable because it does stop them from casting Belcher. Um, we don't really want to interact with too much of what they're doing. Leyline of Sanctity is pretty good as well. Daybreak Coronet might just be getting trimmed out for these Leyline of Sanctities, uh, which would force our opponent to have all the glitters. Uh, Pithing Needle can also stop the activation of Goblin Char Belcher, which can be relevant. All right, so I think let's bring in our Ley Lines, our Gadok Teague, our Pithing Needle, take out our Daybreaks, like all our two mana auras. Just look to race the shit out of our opponent. All right, well, this forces our opponent to find Force of Vigor. Um, it's got an okay clock at four. We're going to need a little bit of help off the top of our library. I think it's definitely a keep, though. Um, the only other consideration for a sideboard is Force of Vigor. If our opponent plays the Char Belcher without activating it on the same turn and lets us untap, um, we can get the win. Realistically, that's only going to happen if they're playing sloppy and against good players. That's not going to be a line. We already had six, seven cards to bring in anyway. Um, so we'll, we'll just go with that. Looks like our opponent's mulliganed a bit. They're currently at five. And our opponent has decided to keep a five card hand. Um, as things go, let's go ahead and Temple Garden this turn. Uh, planning to search up a Plains to maybe play around a future Magus of the Moon. Um, really good draws. Like any of our two mana creatures are good draws. Any of our auras are good draws. Blanks are land and ley line of sanctity. Opponent with Cradle, we find a Beseju. Uh, so that's a little bit of an interaction. All right, in there for four. It's a good starting point. Now we just need some help from the top. Our opponent plays Spikefield Cave in tapped. That's a pass to us. That's not the help from the top that we were looking for. Let's go ahead and attack for a four. Uh, like, this is pretty bad. I don't see... Excuse me, holding up Besaidu as being reliable. If our opponent has like Force of Vigor into cantrips, like mana cantrips, um, and Shower Belcher, we could just die there by not holding up Besaidu, but I think we're dead if we don't hold it up anyway. Like if, if we do hold it up, I think we're dead anyway. All right, opponent shocks in a land. They're going for something here. Recross the pass, sure thing. All right, so we can see a whole bunch of cards from our opponent with the recross the paths. A Veil of Summer. Interesting that they're boarding that in against us. Protection from blue and black. I don't know what that does against us. You and permanents you control gain hexproofing until end of turn from blue and black. So that's not going to stop our force of vigor. I don't, I don't understand that one. We also don't see any Force of Vigor here from our opponent. They could be currently holding it in hand and looking to dop, top deck the Chow Belchers, though. I guess an offer you can't refuse is also tech. Uh, we'll put Glade Cover Scout on the bottom of our library and actually try to kill our opponent this turn. Um, Engineered Explosives could be what our opponent's putting on top to reset the board. As it is... We're like, what, one damage short? That would be really lame. Opponent concedes the game. 
six, seven damage. Oh, that's strange. Maybe they just miss sideboarded and accidentally clicked in Veil of Summer instead of uh, Force of Vigor. I'm unsure. Uh, going into game three, we haven't really got anything to change, so let's just resubmit. Uh, starting seven looks decent. We've got Leyline Protection. We've also got Floofy Paws. Um, we basically want to draw one land and two one mana auras which would be the most ideal thing in the world. Uh, opponent is keeping seven. And shocks this one in for three damage. Play Strike to Rich, making a treasure token. Find a ley line off the top. Well, that is not the card we're looking for. Let's go ahead and fetch shock here should be fine. We could just get Magus of the Moon next turn. Uh, maybe... Maybe I just windswept teeth, hold it up. Magus of the Moon would be backbreaking at this point. Uh, they would have to like ritual into Magus. They play this one tapped. So Garak Tig off the top. Uh, we have to play out beside you. There's no choice. I think we swap. Switch gears, play Gadok Teague, and force our opponent to answer the Gadok Teague. I think that's our best line at this point. Man, Gadok Teague has been an absolute all star this league. Holy smokes. All right, he's shocked this one in. Well, that's a bit of an unfortunate draw because we can't cast two Ethereal Armors in the same turn. Um, I think we just continue to develop, play a floofy pause, and then look to kill them next turn. We'd be killing them next turn with ethereal armor anyway, I think. Because it's like three, attack for three. This would be worth two damage this turn, so they'd be on eight. And then we could ethereal armor next turn for three damage. I think like just floofy paws get the free tutors just as good. Opponent with a Valakit Awakening. All right, so they ditched all four cards. They've got a fresh five cards in hand. They've got a draw step to go up to six. They're going to need an answer for some of this stuff going on. Opponent plays Spikefield Cave in tapped. And is this a recross the paths now? They can also Explosives on one, pop, um, or they could Explosives on two. Hope we don't kill them and then pop that next turn. Oh, never mind. They can't Explosives because Gadok Teague. Um, so if that was their line, that's not a line available to them. This is pretty funny. Um, although, like, just top decking the Gadok Teague, I, I really can't complain here. Uh, getting Rancor there, and this is exactly lethal. If we don't get interacted with, we deal lethal damage. Opponent concedes. Look, Gadok Teague, he is the real MVP here. What a lad. Holy smokes. All right, welcome back for match number four now. We lost the die roll again. Our seven looks good, so we'll go ahead and keep it. All right, so it looks like we are versing Burn here. Burn or Prowess. What do we see? Audacity off the top. All right, well, let's go ahead and play our poster boy and pass the turn to our opponent. We've got like a very aggressive hand here. It's just about our opponent not comboing us out. So no idol on the Great Revel. That's kind of a nice start for us. Opponent attacking in. And post combat Rift Bolt, okay. We might as well conserve a touch of life total here. And I think our plan is just to race here this game. All right, so Rift Bolt upkeep straight at the face. A couple of prowess triggers on the Swift Spirits. Attacking in, this is a post-combat Eidolon. Oh, wow, they're just holding stuff up. What's going on here? It's a little bit weird, a little bit strange. Hmm, 
We could scout here as a blocker. I think that's fine. Probably want to empty our hand anyway. Not a daybreak coronet for us. I guess our opponent's holding up Skullcrack. We're in like a reasonable spot here to just kill them on damage next turn. Wow, they concede. Oh, wow. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> All right. Well, we're pretty fortunate that our opponent just flooded out there. Um, we're against Burn here. Obviously, Leyline is good. We're also on the draw this game, so Force of Vigor is reasonable. All right, so here's all the colors of a burn deck. Um, Skullcrack can stop you from gaining life. Um, you've also got Roiling Vortex, a play that can stop you from gaining life. You've got Enchantment Destruction in Wear Tear. Um, and also you've got Deflecting Palm, which can take your creature's damage and throw it back at your face. Um, deflecting Palm is the biggest issue here. It gets past Leyline, it gets past Hexproof. It's really strong. Uh, there's like also a low-key possibility for solitude here maybe i think it's something like that <clears throat> we're probably boarding too many cards out if we bring in our solitudes they they could be a good consideration though uh so ley line of sanctity obviously stops burn spells from hitting our face force of vigor destroys roiling vortex also destroys eidolon of the great revel which a turn to, to eidolon of the great revel can just destroy your day being on aura hexproof uh it's probably something like this a whole bunch of floofies out spirit mantle cartouche all that glitters out um with floofy paws there cartouche is actually maybe slightly better than spider umbra actually um, all the glitters could stay in and Floofy could come out. Yeah, let's just do that. We're not realistically going in on Floofy against Burn. All right, so we see the seven with two lands that don't hurt us, one land that does. We can give one lot of Vigilance. We don't have First Strike. We don't have Trample. Uh, I think this is a Mulligan. We can do better than that. No creature hand. All right, still no good, still no good. So our opponent scoop to ley line at three, I guess. I guess we keep a ley line hand, bottom, bottom, bottom and bottom and see what happens, yeah. All right, opponent with Goblin Guide. So that can help filter our draws a little bit. First thing we want to see is a Hexproof Guy. That's not a Hexproof Guy. I play out a land and pass the turn. All right, now they've hit Idol on the Great Rebel. So that's another thing. Ethereal Armor on top. And well, we all know no creature is coming on our end. So this could be just like going to game three very shortly. Um... Arguably, we could have kept our seven card hand. It was a capable hand. I do think we could have done better, and it was very unfortunate to have to mulligan this low with the uh, London mulligan rule. Light up the stage from our opponent. No doubt, I Goblin Guide is going to enter at some point, um, and these creatures are just going to beat us down really, really hard. All right, well, we can see there because uh, they've got the win, right? A oh, scout on top. That's that's salt to the wound, right? All right. Well, uh, we can resubmit. We can potentially take out a force of vigor and bring in like another card. I don't really think there's a huge reason to. Force of vigor is pretty good into a little bit of their deck, though. No lander. All right. This looks perfectly serviceable at six. Just bottom the forest. The horizon canopy deals damage to us, but it does tap for white, so we're lining ourselves up for a daybreak coronet. And we can also double aura before our opponent can idle on the great rebel. Uh, mountain and nothing from our opponent just yet. That's a nice dead draw from us. Um, well, opponents just conceded at that. Well, unlucky to him. Uh, Leyline of Sanctity is obviously like really, really good there. Um, I think our opponent was a little bit tilted going into this match before anything even happened. Uh, so we'll take the win and move on to the final match. All right, match number five, and we won the die roll. We're going to go ahead and keep this hand. When it's on a Gigantha deck, so, you know, Tron, Prowess, etc. Um, Underworld Breach, all that good stuff. 
Uh, I think Razor Edge Thicket turn one is fine past the turn. Realistically, we might want to hit a third land. Um, probably two is fine for this lay this this game. Misha's Bobble, so this is probably Underworld Breach. Same events in tapped. Misha's Bobble was targeting us. Then all about the Windswept Heath. Let's go ahead and crack that one. Get a basic. Because us Burgle boys, we are basic. And go ahead and attack for four. All right, opponent shocks into Legislator, plays the Misha's Bobble, gets a trigger here. Yeah, this is all the hallmarks of Jeskai Breach. It's everything I'm seeing here. Opponent targets us again. And Spider Umber off the top, so that's fine. We can crack that one and get a basic Spider Umber here. Opponent knows about that one. Uh, we'll give our opponent a connive, but I think it's worth it to get Spider Umber down to play around Engineered Explosive main deck. We definitely want to resolve the Daybreak Coronet. Opponent just concedes. Excellent. All right, so we can see an Underworld Breach, Grinding Station deck. Um, some of them run white cards like Teferi in the main deck. Others just run um, cards in the sideboard, such as Wear Tear, Prismatic Ending, March, all that sort of stuff. Um, we can see issues of engineered explosives, which can be reoccurred by Emery, which can be a big, big issue for us. Um, sometimes they can have counter magic like spell pierce as well, which they'll be boarding in. Um, this is really, really good into us. Grinding station obviously just mills out pretty hard um, with underworld breach and any zero mana artifact. Mox Amber, they need a legendary creature in play, of which they've got a few, four, eight of. Something like Damping Sphere would be like reasonable here, but no one really plays that these days. Um, we can Pithing Needle, we can Chalice on zero, we can Force to blow up the Grinding Station in response to the activation. They do have a like one of Thassa's Oracle to win the match, so like Leyline of Sanctity is not going to stop like a Gut Shot or something like that, Grape Shot, pardon me. Mostly we probably want to like trim on our expensive stuff and just streamline and go into it um, We will be cutting a few more cards than this, but these are our two easiest cuts We probably want floofy paws just to like rush out against our opponent and defeat them really really quick uh, Gadok Teague can also come in because that stops engineered explosives. So that's next leveling our opponent our evasion's probably reasonable because I think they can generate tokens with their lands and everything. We probably only want to take four cards out, five if you count the floofy paws. So we're like overboarding here a little bit at this point. Let's go like for a semi even split here. Something like that, I think, is fine. I think Chalice on zero just shuts off their, their whole recursion with Mox Amber and Misha's Bobble. Opponent keeps a seven. We can search up Dried Arbor. We don't have any Totem Armor. Opponent has Unholy Heat, Lightning Bolt, things like that. Uh, hello, Hexproof, guys. All right, mulligan to oblivion and look to keep a hand. Cool, I guess this one's gonna have to do it. So I want Raghavan on a mode of four. Yikes, that's like freaking horrid for us. All right, we'll play this guy out and pass the turn. Uh, opponent in with Raghavan. Rogvan breaking on Dried Arbor, and I'm glad I'm not drawing that Dried Arbor, so thank you, opponent, for doing that. It's very likely they hold up Spell Pierce here, and we're in a bit of trouble from that point forth. Uh, let's see if they respond to the Hyena Umbra. Hyena Umbra has resolved. Um, I think at this point, I'm passing the turn, looking to block the Rogvan, looking to draw an extra effect. I think if we play Pithing Needle, it probably gets countered. Um, also, they're not at a turn where they're going to be going off. They don't have Grinding Station on the battlefield yet. 
Oh, you just got prismatic ending opponent. That's pretty bad for us. Weta, yeah, I mean, same shit. If we played this, our opponent might have um, done the combination effect and got rid of an artichoke and an enchantment. So I think we got out of jail a little bit there. Old. All right, so opponent in for five. Add no good blocks here. Four cards in hand for our opponent. Rancor off the top. Uh, that's a pretty good card for them to cast, should they choose to. All right, and Island into Legislator. Yikes. They are so far ahead here. All right. Well, that's pretty good. And that's not. All right, we can see. Um... I think because our opponent has wear tear as interaction, we've seen that now. Maybe we'll just want to take these out and we'll just bring in all our force of vigors. Our force of vigors obviously blow up the grinding station and then we're pretty happy. We can interrupt the mid combo at that point, which is pretty strong. It's also, you know, zero mana. We've got like a nice zero mana uh, sideboard mostly. Ley lines, solitudes, chalice, force. It's pretty ass. And yep, that's not the hand. No white mana. That is like such a middle finger, man. We can't keep that. Alright, this one we can keep. Bottom, bottom. Keep the remainder. Usually these cards go down in power level. Um, the more you mulligan. Because they are card disadvantage, but... We just have to hope it's good, right? Opponent Bauble targeting us. They know what's on top. And holding up Spell Pierce. You son of a gun. You little bastard. <laughs> I mean, fortunately we got Sentinel's Eyes, but we got no cards to power the escape. Windswept Teeth. Hey. Um, we're talking about powering the escape, right? That's, that's helpful. That's handy. I'll take that one. Uh, no counter from the opponent. Sentinel's Eyes has resolved. We'll be attacking now. And nothing in the end set for our opponent. Alright, holding up mana now. This deck doesn't seem to play counter magic. Um, I mean, they could be spell pierce, but they're not running specifically counter spell. I think we continue to waste our opponent's time a little bit here. When they tap out mana, we can look to spell pierce. This is fine. It's not a very daunting clock for two a turn. Opponent with consider surveil one. Keep C card on top. So a third spy bluff canal from our opponent into Legis excuse me, Legislator. Daybreak off the top. Well, that's not a very vulnerable card. I don't know what is. So let's Spirit Mantle sort of bait the counter spell. There's a spell pierce there. We sort of expected that one a little bit anyway. Um, go ahead and pass the turn now. If we attack it, our opponent has like a zero mana spell for some reason, um, like a gut shot, um, noxious revival, something like that. We can get blown out and lose our creature. So it's not even worth like ramming through and expecting them not to block. Opponent with Sacred Foundry now, and if they start exiling these side enchantments, Daybreak Coronet kind of comes weak. Monastery Mentor? Yikes, that's going to be a beating, man. Holy smokes. Uh, opponent draws a card with the Legislator ability up to three in hand. And uh, I think we just got to take this opportunity to resolve Daybreak. Hope to dodge Wear Tear, Prismatic Ending, cards like that. Go ahead and attack for five. I guess our opponent takes it and starts genning tokens. All right, that seems to be what they've done. Expressive iteration, that's disgusting, man. Uh, Flutter Strands into the graveyard there. With the surveil one. Uh, we can see consider in exile from that iteration. Opponent plays it. Two lots of surveil. Oh man, that's this this deck digs. Look look at that. That is crazy. Uh, Dragon's Red Channeler surveilled to the graveyard. Hallowed Fountain surveilled to the graveyard. Consider draw a card. Five in hand. One mana up currently. 
Uh, they've not yet played a land for turn. They just play the Flooded Strand just now. Has to attack. We don't have flying. We can't block. <laughs> um, so if we like Spider Umbra attack, our opponent has the opportunity to like get all these prowess triggers, which we don't really want because it makes attacking difficult. I think the play is attack and then Spider Umbra post combat. Um, all right, we'll go for two prowess tokens. Sure. All right, cool. Uh, we'll see if they have the answer to this. If they do, I mean, we've got Force of Vigors for their combo in hand. Um, they are churning out a bit of value, so these tokens are like fairly free for them, though. Come on, resolves, cool bananas, cracks, and steam vents in tapped, four in hand. Uh, we have to try and play out this spider umbra to play around like a prismatic ending, removing. Sentinel's eyes and then Daybreak Coronet falling off into the graveyard for free. So it's just something we have to go for. Iteration finding where to. <laughs> That's a sad one. Uh, goes after the totem armor effect. Interesting. Wonder if that means they have the explosives in hand. All right, so some monk tokens. What's going to the graveyard? A scolding time to the graveyard. Um, so they've played a mountain, four cards in hand, have to attack there, attacking in the air as well with the Ledger Shredder. What we really want to see is like a Rancor to resolve, get some trample happening, explosives on one from our opponent. That is not what we want to see, oh god. I think we have to take this one on the chin. I don't see a play around it. With the way our opponent sequenced our manner, it's not like they're holding up a um, fetch land either. Think we're just getting blown up during combat step and we have to to reload after that. All right, there. Blowing up pre-combat. Only find our mana. So I guess we draw a card here, look for a creature, shock in temple garden. No creature, temple garden in tapped. Daybreak off the top though could be good. Opponent with a lot of prowess here now. Um, it is entirely possible here that we are versing a Jeskai prowess deck and no Underworld Breach grinding station. Um, maybe Monastery Mentor is a tip off to that. Maybe we've missideboarded and like all of this is dead cards. Third expressive iteration. Yeah, that's pretty good opponent. Don't mind if you do. Because instead of these Force of Vigor, we could have had Cartouche, All the Glitters, Audacity, Floofy Paws. Like, we could have had a lot of good stuff here. All right, opponent attacking in, and that might even be lethal. It's 9, 14, 17 damage. Yeah, opponent's got us. All right, well, that one sort of sucks, but we did still end the league at three and two. Um, maybe a little bit of miss sideboarding there. After seeing half of our opponent's deck, it wasn't one grinding station, um, and there also wasn't a single Underworld Breach that we saw. Paris decks can just play Underworld Breach to go a little bit harder at the end. We also didn't see Emery. Um, I think it's likely we just versed a prowess deck here and miss sideboarded, so apologies for that, guys. All right, so as for sideboarding, I'm really liking um, the way the main deck is performing so far. So we're going to leave that one unchanged. Um, I think if you want to play around with flex slots yourself, the flex slots are audacity, although I think that is the lesser of the flex slots. Um, All that glitters, spirit mantle, cartouche, griff spoons are your main flex slots. After that, I would go audacity. I would keep in spider umbra and hyena umbra because totem umbra is really important into Merktide, into this engineered explosives rubbish that we just versed. Um, so I think one Gadok Teague coming into the sideboard is fine. Um, toss ups on what to remove at this point. Um, I think we could trim any of Pithing Needle 
um, Force of Vigor, Chalice of the Void. There is overlap between Chalice and Solitude, so maybe that is a way to go about it. Force of Vigor, it depends on how prevalent Hammer Time is. That could also be trimmed. Um, if Hammer Time is not super uh, prevalent, you could get away with just three. Um, I think that's a bit risky. I think I'd prefer to go for like two Chalice over that. So this is where I'm at. This is what I'm probably going to be looking to run in the next league. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Was like Gadok T an absolute freaking all-star or was it an absolute freaking all-star? Um, have a wonderful day time. Sorry. Till next time, have a wonderful day, guys. I'll see you then. Thanks.